I've been studying nutrition for over 12 years now, and today I'm gonna to distill the four principles you need to know to have proper and healthy nutrition. First and foremost, how do I know so much about nutrition? Well, I'm the owner of Wallace Fitness Center, which is a complete wellness center. So not only have I been in the trenches working with clients to help them get in shape and live a healthier life, but I also hire people that have a background in clinical nutrition. I have nurse practitioners, medical doctors, personal trainers. I've had seminars with registered dietitians at my facility here at Wallace Fitness Center. And I've also looked at hundreds at this point, if not thousands of blood work through Steel Health and Hormone Center. And I can tell you, these are the keys to proper nutrition. First, let's define proper nutrition. I would say proper nutrition is something that leads to optimal blood results and good performance parameters. There's a couple caveats here before we get into these four principles. The first one is this won't apply to people that have extreme food sensitivities or allergies. So for instance, somebody with celiac disease is gonna have a tough time following these principles. The second thing, people at the upper, upper echelon of performance, probably not you. They may have to get a little more specific than these basic principles. And then lastly, there is variation. Food isn't just what you eat. It isn't just fuel. It also has to work into your cultural background. I know food is very big, especially in my family. So while there is optimal, don't be afraid to deviate outside of these four principles every once in a while because you have to live as well. But first and foremost, this shouldn't be controversial, but I know it will be. Calories are king. That is the number one principle. If you don't believe me, there was a professor, I believe his name was Mark Hobb, who followed what was called the Twinkie diet, where literally all he ate was junk food. That was it. Twinkies, McDonald's, pizza, other fast food, but he controlled for calories. And over the course of 10 weeks, he not lost nearly 30 pounds and his blood parameters improved. So I'm not saying that's the diet you should follow is the Twinkie diet, but I am saying that it illustrates the point that if you take anything from this, you need to find a way to eat for your goals. I have videos on this channel, how to use my fitness pal to gain weight, how to use my fitness pal to lose weight, how to use my fitness pal to maintain weight. All of that is there on this channel. But if there's anything you take away from that, from this video, it's if you want to lose weight, you have to consume less than you burn. If you want to gain weight, you need to consume more than you burn. Plain and simple, if you disagree with me, let me know down in the comments below, and I would love to see your data. And again, this data needs to be controlling for calories. Don't control, don't compare vegan or carnivore to the standard American diet unless you can equate for calories, plain and simple. That's principle number one. Calories are king and you need to eat for your goals in terms of energy consumption. Principle number two, you have to have a moderately high protein diet. I know vegans are turning in their cabbage patch right now, but this is just the truth. If your goal is to have a long, healthy, independent life, or if your goal is to recover from hard workouts, you should have a relatively high protein diet. There are supplements you can take. There's things that you can do to try to get your protein up if you are vegan, things like that. But if you don't want to do that, you need to eat protein in the conventional sense. That includes things like chicken, beef, turkey, fish. This protein is important because not only will it help you recover from workouts, but if you're somebody that doesn't actually work out, it's also gonna go a long way to preserving lean tissue. Lean tissue is what's gonna allow you to age gracefully. It's gonna prevent things like falls. It's gonna allow you to live independently. Having lean tissue is extremely important as you age. If you're not getting adequate protein in your diet, your body is gonna to start to draw some amino acids from your actual tissue, from your muscle tissue. So if you're having adequate protein, it's providing essential amino acids, essential. These are things your body cannot make on their own. They have to get it from diet. Your body has to get it from your diet. And if you're not providing it, it's gonna draw from lean tissue. So that's principle number two. You should have a moderately high protein diet. I kind of pause to give specifics on that, but if I had to give you a roundabout estimate, I would say anywhere from 0.5 to one gram per pound of body weight. Where this starts to deviate is if you're somebody that's trying to get extremely lean, you may, may need a little more protein, or if you're somebody that's 
morbidly obese in terms of body fat, you might not need that much protein. You could probably get away with a little bit less, but by and large, most people should have 0.5 to one gram per pound of body weight. This is principle number three. This is gonna be controversial for the carnivore guys. You should have a relatively high fiber diet as well. Now I know the carnivore guys are probably rolling in their deli meat right now, but this is just by the numbers. This is just from the blood work that I've seen that if you don't have adequate fiber in your diet, this is what I've seen. I see dyslipidemia. I see extremely high LDL. Sometimes HDL looks okay, but very, very high LDL. And I know sometimes people in carnivore will be like, oh, that doesn't matter, that doesn't matter. But you should probably be asking the question like, is this okay? Instead of just taking somebody's word for it that it absolutely doesn't matter. Because for me, I would rather my blood stay in the normal parameters than be way, 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 way outside of those normal parameters because there's a reason why they're considered normal parameters. It's because that's where most people exist optimally. Now there is a time and a place to do like a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet. If you just need to get body fat off as quickly as possible, that's a great diet to do it. Uh, and remember calories are king. So there is a time and a place for extremely low carbohydrate diets, but for the most part, you should be having some fiber. It works in a couple different ways. The first way it lowers cholesterol is by actually binding to what's called bile salts. So that's involved in digestion. This soluble fiber specifically, but just try to get fiber in, is gonna bind to these bile salts. These bile salts, remember, are involved in digestion. You, you pass them, you poop them out, and then your body has to draw from blood cholesterol to make more bile salts. So soluble fiber will lower cholesterol in that way, but it's also beneficial for intestinal motility. Some people can have a carnivore diet and they say it's, it's fantastic for digestion, but in my opinion, and what I've seen with a lot of my clients is that when you increase the fiber, you typically increase intestinal motility. You start to see people actually have some regular poops and that's fantastic in terms of comfort level. You gotta be a little bit careful with the gas, especially if you're using a fiber supplement, but a moderately high fiber diet, I believe is fantastic for health and for performance. It's tough to perform when you're extremely bound up. How much fiber? For me, I can just tell you what works for me. I have 40 grams a day and that allows my cholesterol to stay fantastic. It looks perfect. And this is from somebody who has struggled with cholesterol for since I was 17 years old. It's been as high as 300 and now it sits right around 180 and that's predominantly because of my high fiber diet. Most people can probably get away from anywhere from 25 to 40 grams a day in that sweet spot. 40 grams might be a little bit high, but that's my opinion. 25 to 40 grams a day is gonna go a long way to lowering your cholesterol. And again, this isn't medical advice, but lowering your cholesterol and increasing intestinal motility. Principle number four. This shouldn't be controversial either. And when I explain it, you'll see how it lends itself to the first three principles. And that's eating a minimally processed diet. Most people can't define that. Most people can't say, I don't know what that means. When you cook, that's a process. When you, when you pick it from the ground, that's a process. True, I would define it. Minimally processed means the fewer steps between its natural state to your plate. So for instance, a steak is less processed than a Slim Jim. Corn on the cob is less processed than high fructose corn syrup. So the less steps, the least amount of steps that you can take from its natural state, from where it exists in nature, to your plate, in my definition is minimally processed versus highly processed. The more steps, the more highly processed, the less steps, the less processed. The reason that this is so important is twofold. The first one is that it actually, it's tough to over consume minimally processed food. Yes, if you eat nothing but almonds, sure, yeah, you can definitely consume way too much, but minimally processed cuts out a lot of things. It cuts out a lot of the hyper palatable foods that you can just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and you never get tired of, but it also has by its nature, a little more protein and a little more fiber, and it's typically more volume. There's something to be said about mastication, actually putting the food in your mouth, chewing and swallowing. And the longer that process takes, or the more volume that you can eat per given calorie, the fuller you're gonna feel and the easier it's gonna be to maintain a calorie deficit if you're somebody that's, let's say, extremely overweight and calories are king, or if you're just trying to rely on your hunger cues, then having a level of mastication swallowing and not food not designed in a lab to be hyper palatable is also gonna help 
with your actual hunger cues. And then secondly, they're typically richer in micronutrients, especially if you have a variety. So if you're having fruits, vegetables, fish, beef, fibrous uh, carbohydrates, you're gonna get a nice mix of, of micronutrients. You don't wanna have micronutrient deficiencies and that's maybe not uh, maybe not likely, especially in the Western civilization with so much fortified food. But with those fortified foods comes the hyperpalatability, which can come with overeating. So if you're having minimally processed, you're getting a lot of water soluble vitamins in your fruits and vegetables. You're getting a lot of fiber, you're getting a lot of protein. So it lends itself very well to the first three principles and it also increases your micronutrient intake. All of that being said, those are the first four principles. That calories are king, high protein diet, high fiber diet, minimally processed. Again, there are certain people that this isn't going to apply for. If you're somebody with celiac disease, obviously a high fiber diet is going to be tough for you. If you're somebody with certain allergies, maybe you can't have dairy or maybe you're allergic to certain fishes. But that's really outside of that or extreme performance parameters or extreme lean parameters. Those are the four principles I think most people should follow. And this is coming from somebody that's done carnivore. I've had a I don't want to say vegan diet, but there was a stretch where I was minimizing my meat as well. I've tried it all over the board. And if you find one that works for you, just make sure that you're following the principles. Maybe you need to supplement. But I will say, as somebody that has tons of certifications in training and nutrition, who works with people that have a degree in clinical nutrition, has nurse practitioners working for them, sees tons of blood work, these super restrictive diets like carnivore, like uh, veganism, you got to supplement if you're going to take that. I don't think that is the optimal diet and I know most people disagree with that. And I'm a fan of Paul Saladino. I'm a fan of a lot of those carnivore guys. I've read these books, The Carnivore Code, How Not to Die and everything in between. But if you follow these four principles, I do believe that it's going to optimize your health and for most people it's going to optimize their performance. So look, if you learned something in this video, do me a favor, like the video if you're interested in seeing content like this don't forget to subscribe. My name is Alex Wallace. I'm the owner of Wallace Fitness Center. I'm also the owner of Steel Health and Hormone Center. We can do HRT, TRT, alternative medicine all across the United States. If you're interested in something like that, make sure you go on our website, steelhealthandhormonecenter.com. I'll put a link down in the description and we'll talk to you within 24 hours. Again, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you in the next video.